Hello folks, various other humanoid and non-humanoid species. Today we have for you some utter excitement. Behold. Light goes on. Light goes off. Light goes on. Light goes off. Thank you, and don't forget to dislike, unshare, and unsubscribe from this nonsense channel. And we'll see you next time. No, okay, seriously, that would be way too short. We need to um, we need to get some serious boredom going on here. So, what have we actually done here? Well, what I've just demonstrated to you is switching the low side um, U phase IGBT on our MG ZS inverter. Yay me. Now, why or how does all this come about, you may ask? Well, I don't quite have a fully functioning open inverter logic board uh, working here as yet. A lot of the time when performing uh, reverse engineering, we kind of like to do a little bit of an intermediate um, stage on it and this is what I usually do and this guy here is a little breakout board so what this lets us do is it lets us put the same connector that we have the 50 way uh, 1.27 millimeter IDC connector on there and break out all of the connections on this to a much more easy to use type of a type of a header here, which I'll show you in more detail in a few moments. But a board like this then lets me verify, number one, that I have the pins correctly identified here. And it lets me find any flaws in my uh, design stra strategy uh, that I might be doing, because I have quite a bit of stuff breadboarded here, uh, which I will now show you. Okay. So what we have here is we have our MG inverter uh, here and our gate driver board and all of its functions. And over there on the left, plugged into that, uh, you will see that I have my little um, breakout board uh, that I was just showing you. And I have some signals and power supplies connected to it. And over here, let me remove that. We're not getting to that yet. Over here, uh, we have a breadboard uh, with some uh, circuitry on that that's providing some signals for us. So, this is where we can kind of verify and make changes easily without having to go through several different uh, printed circuit board designs. Uh, power is being provided. There's two power supplies currently going to this guy. Been provided by just a bench power supply. One on the right is just a 5 volt supply for a logic. One on the left is a 30 volt supply. And that is used um, as the basis of the isolated supply for our gate driver chips. And that is switched into these transformers by means of these two MOSFETs here. And indeed, if we get ourselves a silly scope probe here, and uh, probe one of those MOSFET gates and show you that signal on the old silly scope. There it is. Beautiful 133-ish kilohertz and roughly about 45% uh, duty cycle. That is being generated here. In fact, there's two uh, signals with a dead time uh, that are being generated by some of these logic chips here, mostly based around a 4047 A stable, or as I used to call them back in the day, ass stable uh, chips um, that are supplying that, those switching waveforms in here to our uh, gate driver and letting all that power up. So then that means I can come along here just using a simple light and a 12 volt supply here on the high voltage um, 
we can verify that we have our correctly identified gate driver signals here as we can see I'm on the low side here of the U phase and this little blue wire here if I just tap this off the 5 volt bus here we can uh, flick that light on and off unless I blow something up yeah, I've blown some. Oh no, I've actually annoyed it as I was flicking it there with the thing. So it's basically created a um, always oh, shut down event uh, because it won't allow you, obviously, to switch on the two sides at the one time because that would be very bad. Um, that would annoy. Uh, um, that would annoy everyone. So what we got to do? is we got to reset that and get our low side and there we go now we can flick it again and it works away until I annoy it again anyhow um, that is then that, like things like that being able to create a fault here then lets me verify that I have my fault lines correctly identified uh, we're going to do a little bit of soak testing here to make sure that I don't have anything weird going on. And then pretty soon, uh, we're going to be able to design a placement uh, logic board here. But the advantage of doing it in this way with a breakout board and a little bit of basic logic here uh, lets me make sure, well, you know, at least as much as I can, that I've got everything correctly identified here. Now, I know this is not quite MG, but I'll just tack it on the end here because there's not really enough here to uh, make a video on its own yet. What we have here, folks, is an e-golf um, inverter. Uh, it's the match of that motor there, which we'll probably be using in our plastic Panzer project. But more on that later. Uh, what we've got as I said, is eGolf inverter and a very conveniently located uh, logic board here that uh, I've just removed and uh, not at all unlike the MG. Um, this guy uses these ERNI, which I think has been subsumed into TE now, uh, 50 way plugs, one for the gate driver, one for the external connections, another smaller 8 way ERNI connector here. Which goes on to this guy because uh, this is for the DC DC converter because this inverter has a 12 volt uh, DC DC converter built in. Interestingly, uh, here, at least for, for some people, I guess, um, if you look at the back of this, you've got two big chips here. I'll try and zoom in. I don't know if this phone will want to work for you. We've got the proverbial Infineon Tricore MCU, which is the big guy here. And just to the bottom right of him is an Altera. Um, looks like a CPLD, I would imagine. I don't think it's an FPGA. I haven't even bothered to look up the number. But why are we interested in this? Well, this is a Volkswagen inverter, okay? So we got Infineon Tricore and Altera CPLD. We come back up to our MG logic board. Now they're not as easy to see here because they're covered in musk goo. Seems as if the, the um, MG people might have, um, I don't know, have got some kind of license from Elon to secrete goo. But anyway, it makes it they're, they're not as easy to see the numbers and so on on the devices. But Trust me when I say this, this guy here, you bet it, Infineon Tricore MCU and his best mate down here, yep, Altera uh, Max 5 CPLD. Hmm. So why is that, why is that interesting to me? Well, it's, it's interesting to me uh, in light of some of the recent um, things that I've, um, I'm getting involved with here, 
Uh, might be interesting to you folks too. Um, I don't know, I used to watch a lot of Lewis Rossman videos um, about laptop and consumer electronics repair, that kind of thing. I don't, I don't so much anymore, but um, I probably need to now, again. <clears throat> Those of you that might be familiar, uh, he's been very much involved with the right to repair and so on. And so they're always contacting manufacturers of things like laptops and other, you know, very much more popular, let, let's say, than the stuff we do here, uh, consumer electronics. And because, you know, there's no repair information, there's no schematics, there's no software tools for marrying up various components and programming, you know, weird ASIC chips and so forth. Um, and he dug really deep into that. And there's a lot of nonsense reasons they kind of throw out just to cover themselves, but it seems like the real, real reason uh, that, they're, that they're not going to give you service books and schematics and stuff anymore is mainly down to the fact that they've signed NDAs with one of the chip makers who have then supplied them with a reference des design that they can just tweak and all of a sudden, congratulations, you now have a brand X laptop or a brand X phone or what, whatever. Now what the person purchasing it or indeed trying to fix it doesn't know is that, well, brand X, brand Y and brand Z, pretty much the gold darn same thing. So, no one be at all surprised, uh, ju judging on what I've seen here, in, ter in terms of, uh, this isn't the first iteration of a Infineon Tricore processor and an Altera CPLD uh, that I've seen on these inverter lo logic boards. I think the first one, I think the first place I saw that was the BMW i Three. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we've got ourselves um, a whole situation there with um, NDAs and a reference design that's been just tweaked, maybe even reference software for driving the motors and so on. Maybe they just tweak the CAN messages in a a spreadsheet or something like that, but um, yeah, it's definitely kind of passively interesting. Uh, I'll wrap up with one uh, thing that in, this relates to the MG here. Um, the MG uses um, these NXP gate driver chips. If you want more info on that, there'll be a link in the description of a GitHub. Uh, repo up there now where I'm keeping all the the information on the MG and I have another one for the e-golf when I eventually work out some of the pinnings and all that nonsense. By the way, Tom Debris has already done some of that stuff, not on the e-golf, but on the plug-in and there are some similarities in there, um, definitely using the same 50-way ERNI connectors anyway. But, interesting one on the NXP gate driver chips. So plug the part number in and you get a data sheet from NXP's website. Um, and it's got the pinouts and, you know, basic electrical data on there. So I was able to work out, you know, you're able, what pin does what and so on. So that's really good because you can just follow the signals then back to your 50-way connector, design the breakout board, blah, blah, blah. So. What I then discovered uh, was that the, like the Model 3 inver inverter, the MG actually communicates with its gate driver chips uh, over SPI at a blistering 1.75 megahertz, by the way, because, you know, seriously. Anyway, so, I know, oh, that's very interesting. And indeed, on the data sheet, it, it tells you, oh, you know, we can do this with SPI and all that. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, so I grabbed some SPI captures. They're on the repo, by the way. Um, and uh, thought, okay, well, let's go back to NXP website and get some, some info on this SPI data. 
I couldn't find um, couldn't find anything, couldn't find any documents or so on. Um, so then I, of course, you have to create an account and g give them your firstborn and all this kind of thing. But got in, contacted tech support, said, look, you know, I'm looking for SPI data on such and such a chip, blah de blah. And I got a, um, a rather surprising email back um, telling me that if I wish to have access to that proprietary information, um, my company uh, would have to have their legal department um, peruse and sign the necessary NDA documents. Mm, interesting choice. So I declined with thanks because EV BMW don't do NDAs. A bit more searching around on the NXP community website. I was able to find little bits of information here and there about uh, people actually struggling to, uh, guess what, to use the SPI data and asking questions and so on. Then I, re I went back at it again and I discovered that they have a um, kind of a development board kit that they sell for big bucks. Um, that you know lets you ev evaluate the part right and they have um software for their own microcontroller and all this guess what mm -hmm. the software for their own microcontroller which is in cpp is freely available on the website so you can be sure i downloaded that crap and uh, that's got everything i need to know in there uh, so that's neat um so we will be able to do SPI comms uh, with our six gate driver ships. But let me, I know I'm, I'm going on, I'm going on, I know, I know. Oh, Damien. It'd be better if I could just talk about this and then we'd be finished very quickly. Anyway. When you first fire up, they obviously configure some variables in the gate driver ships like dead times and under voltage lockouts and all this kind of thing. But they communicate um, all the time with the three high side ships, whereas they only communicate at the very beginning with the three low side ships. I thought that's very interesting. So I did a bit more poking around. And the three high side ships, uh, they have this little A to D converter thing on the isolated side, and they connect them to the three temperature sensors in the IGBT module. So they're then sending the IGBT temperatures back to the Infineon Tricore AI chatbot thing. Um, over SPI at 1.74 megahertz, and that is the sum total of the proprietary data uh, that they're transmitting uh, from their high side drivers. So, I know you're probably sick of me by, by now, and I've rabbited on for way too long. So, I'll wrap this video up, thankfully. Don't forget to give it the proverbial thumbs down. Um, don't check the links in the description because there'll be things like Patreon and PayPal in there. And if you support me, well, then I'm only doing more of this kind of reverse engineering work and publishing information and board designs and all that. And nobody wants that, particularly NXP. Uh, so also links in there to the GitHub repo and Open Inverter Forum and all that good stuff. And actually a few much more interesting EV conversion channels. So do check those out. <clears throat> we leave you there. And until next time. Happy gate driver switching. <laughs>